Hello, this is Dr. Eric Bricker and thank you for watching A Healthcare Z. And today's topic is How to Make a Killing by Tom Mueller. So today I'm gonna to do a book review of a fantastic book that I have recently listened to and it is an expose about the dialysis industry. Now, as many of you know, over 400,000 Americans are currently receiving hemodialysis for what's referred to as ESRD or end-stage renal disease or kidney failure. Now, I have made previous A Healthcare Z videos about the abuses of the dialysis companies and the huge problem of dialysis in America, but this book does an incredibly meticulous job of going through the arc of the entire story of dialysis. And in fact, Mr. Mueller makes an excellent point in terms of how really what's happening in dialysis is just a microcosm of what is happening in healthcare. And so let's go through that arc, that story arc about dialysis. So dialysis was originally invented in 1948. Well, some people say 43, but in terms of having like an actual machine that works, it was 1948. Now, more and more people in America started being di dialyzed, especially in the 1960s, and it was incredibly expensive. And so, in 1972, an amendment was passed within the federal government to allow for people who are on hemodialysis to qualify for Medicare. So before, you had to be 65 or older to be on Medicare. But for dialysis, they say, no, you can have Medicare no matter what age you are. So essentially, we have Medicare for all in America, except we have Medicare for all people that have kidney failure, right? So it's diagnosis specific. So we have Medicare for all if you have a particular diagnosis, that diagnosis being kidney failure. So the government will pay for your dialysis. All right, now, what then happens is that the private companies that actually perform the dialysis, they then consolidate um, especially in the 2000s. That's when uh, DaVita bought one of its main competitors, Gambro, and what, ends, what you have now is what is referred to as a duopoly, where essentially two companies, DaVita and Fresenius, control 80% of the dialysis market in America. That's right, 80% of the 400,000 plus people that are dialyzed in America are, just, are dialyzed by just these two companies. And for a lot of people in their particular town, they only have one choice of one particular dialysis center because there's no other dialysis center anywhere around them. So there's really a lack of choice when it comes to dialysis. There's really a concentration of power. Now, as a result of that lack of choice and that concentration of power, there's an abuse of power, right? The famous Lord Acton saying that absolute power corrupts absolutely. And so, Tom Mueller does a fantastic job of meticulously categorizing and explaining all of the abuses of power, which I don't have time to go over all of them. I highly recommend that you read this book so that you can actually see what's happening. But this is where people who are being dialyzed, if they speak up against their dialysis clinic and they complain about their dialysis clinic or they ask for things about their dialysis uh, regimen to be changed, then the employees of the dialysis centers will actually provoke the patients to uh, act out during their dialysis sessions so that they can have, they being the dialysis centers, can then have an excuse to fire them from their clinic. And so essentially, the dialysis clinics are dropping, they are abandoning dialysis patients. And they don't have a lot of choices. Like I said, there's only like one dialysis center in their particular town. They would have to, and again, remember, you gotta go to dialysis for multiple hours, three days a week, either Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Okay, now, so these abuses of, and, and so these abuses of power not all of them, but some of them have been identified by the federal government, and DaVita has actually had to pay out $1.5 billion in settlements 
over the years. And Fresenius just recently has had to pay out $231 million for things including unnecessary procedures on the fistulas. In other words, where the person gets dialyzed in their arm, they're doing procedures on those fistulas that don't need to be done. But they're doing them anyway because they can make more money that way. Okay, so here you have an arc going from a life-saving invention to government payment for all to industry consolidation to an abuse of power. And this can really be generalized to healthcare at large, which um, this book does, to be like, look, anytime you have a concentration of power, then you're going to have, this is really the lessons I think that you can take away from this book, then you're going to have the vulnerable will be exploited for profit. Exploiting vulnerable people is a very common trope in healthcare. And that is largely because of the lack of choice, whether it's because decreased competition or in the case of regulation. In other words, you've got Medicare regulating DaVita and Fresenius. Then you have regulatory capture where the regulatory agency, in this case, the ESRD network, is actually closer to and friendlier to DaVita and Fresenius than they are to the actual patients they're supposed to be protecting. So in certain situations in America, we have very low competition, like among health insurance carriers, we really don't have a lot of choices there, or you might only have like one or two hospital systems in your town, or even when it's regulated, the regulatory body has been captured by the industry. So, so what do you do? Okay, so you're like, you're in a pickle, all right? So what do you do? Okay, really individual advocacy right now is your best bet. So just know that if you or a family member, if, if, if you need dialysis or a family member needs dialysis, it is highly likely that things are not going to go well for you and you're going to have to speak up and make noise and make people uncomfortable and make people unhappy with what you're doing and, and, and be the squeaky wheel. Because if you're not the squeaky wheel, then you're going to get taken advantage of. And it's even harder for people on dialysis because when they're the squeaky wheel and they speak up, there's revenge and retribution against them at their dialysis facilities. And so this is a fantastic expose. And I want to bring it to your attention. If you're a healthcare nerd like me, and you love learning about the nuances of an exposés in healthcare, then I highly recommend How to Make a Killing. And that's what I wanted to share today. Thank you for watching A Healthcare Z.